If you have a mortgage, what has FHFA been doing for on the mortgage front to stop mortgage or for mortgage forbearance? So, Kevin, we've created a forbearance program so that if you, the borrower, are experiencing a hardship because of this crisis, and it's not simply because if you're sick or a family member is sick, but because you've lost your job, you can reach out to your lender, you can request a pause on payments, so it's not forgiveness, you'll have to pay everything back, but for up to 12 months, you can get forbearance where the payments will be added on later so that if you've lost your job, you can get back on your feet, get back into your mortgage, get current in the future at some point. Also want to note for those homeowners who are facing foreclosure even before this crisis, we've put a pause on any for foreclosures, on any evictions, at least until we'll pass this for the next 60 days. All right, so, so if you're in that situation, who do you call? Who do you call so, first? So call your servicer first, but I really want to emphasize uh, servicers, lenders, the servicer, of course, which is who you send your check to every month, are getting overwhelmed with calls right now. What we're hearing is 70, 80 percent of the calls are people who aren't yet facing the hardship and really want to hear what their options are. So what I would ask you, if you're in that camp where you know you can make your mortgage at the beginning of April, wait till after the beginning of the month. Lenders are about a week away from having online digital solutions. But if you're in a situation today where you don't believe you can make your mortgage at the beginning of April, call your lender who you deal with every month. They will evaluate your situation. Best thing you could do going into this is figure out how much you can pay. So, you know, if your spouse has lost their job but you haven't, perhaps you can pay half. Uh, again, having a number already worked out before you call will make the transition so much quicker. Mark, what about for renters? What have you guys done for them? So as you, as you know, Fannie and Freddie uh, do mortgages for multifamily properties as well. And of course, we should remember about a third of renters are in single family properties, including townhouses, row houses. So if you're a renter, you should contact your landlord. If your landlord wants to be able to give you forbearance, the landlord can co contact Fannie and Freddie if Fannie and Freddie have the loan. And the landlord could get forbearance on the loan based on the fact that, that rent can't be paid during that period. And if their landlord gets into that forbearance program, the landlord is obligated not to evict you during that time. Of course, that means the landlord has All to right, make so, up that payment later, too. All right. So we talked about uh, homeowners. We talked about renters. But what, what about what's being done for mortgage services like Quicken? Uh, because they've got they need to have the liquidity to pay the mortgage in bond investors. But if people aren't paying their monthly mortgages, obviously, Mark, that presents a problem. We are. If this goes on for more than another six, eight weeks, we're going to be looking at a lot of stress among servicers. In fact, if, it, if this goes on more than two months, we're going to be looking at stress at Fannie and Freddie. So, A, I'm optimistic. I want to be optimistic that we can get through this in a short amount of time. Uh, if we get to a situation where this goes longer than two months, then there's absolutely going to need to be a bigger solution. And what, what, do you recommend, what do you suggest as part of that solution? Well, some of this we're preparing for if some non-bank servicers fail, that we'll be able to transfer those servicing rights, those servicing obligations to other lenders. So we're looking for sources of strength in the market. I know servicers have been talking to Congress, been talking to Federal Reserve about getting financing. Some of the Fed's 13-3 facilities may be available. This is something that people are looking at across the board right now. Uh, of course, we're trying to make sure that Fannie and Freddie have strength. Uh, we're anticipating that Fannie and Freddie will have to take delinquent mortgages onto their balance sheet and work with those borrowers. So we're looking everywhere to see where the sources of strength in the system are uh, and trying to build those up and, of course, trying to keep the system going. I've talked to a number of lenders, as you know, many of the non-bank servicers, uh, they function by warehouse landing from the, the big banks. Uh, every, most of the big banks I've talked to say they intend to keep those warehouse lines of credit in place. So again, we're talking to the players, trying to see where we might need to shift capacity. Uh, I, I feel comfortable that if we, can get, if we get through this in 68 weeks, we'll be fine financially as a system. That's not to say that uh, there won't be a few uh, financial institution failures here and there. But again, it'll be a larger amount of assistance that's needed if we go longer than that. And Mark, just final question. Has this completely taken off the timetable of a Fannie and Freddie resolving or withdrawing the conservatorship? Not really. You know, I think you've heard me say, Kevin, I never thought they could get out this year anyhow. So this would still be at earliest a 2021, 2022 event. Uh, this, of course, does depend on how long this goes, how much losses they suffer. Uh, as you know, I've spent my last 11 months on the job building up capital at Fannie and Freddie. They're in a much better shape than they were a year ago. 
But again, it really depends on how long this is, which of course we're all trying to figure out.